In this video, we're going to discuss the factors that will favor SN1 reaction. We will also go through all the steps involved in an SN1 mechanism. SN1 stands for unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. There are two components that are involved in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. One of them is substrate that has an alkyl group attached to a leaving group, so we'll abbreviate it as RLG. Another is the nucleophile. SN1 is unimolecular because the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of substrate only, and that makes SN1 a first-order reaction. Let's look at the factors that will favor SN1 reaction. Since SN1 involves the formation of carbocation, it will want to go for substrates that will form stable carbocation. The more stable, the faster the reaction will go. This will make more sense once we look through the mechanism later. That being said, tertiary substrate is definitely the most favorable for SN1 because tertiary carbocation is the most stable, and then it's followed by the secondary. And primary, which is going to be the least favorite because primary carbocation is highly unstable. As for the nucleophile, the strong ones will favor SN2 reaction. Therefore, the weak nucleophile will go for SN1 reaction. Normally, the nucleophile for SN1 are neutral molecules like water and alcohols. As for the solvent, polar protic solvents such as water and alcohols are preferred. Polar protic solvents contain hydrogen atom that is connected to an electronegative atom like nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine, and it's capable of hydrogen bonding. So this type of solvent is going to be able to support the carbocation that is formed as an intermediate. Usually, the solvent in SN1 also acts as a nucleophile, and that process is known as solvolysis, where the nucleophile and the solvent are the same. Nucleophilic substitution reactions prefer low temperature in general. This is because if heat is indicated in the reaction, then elimination is going to dominate over nucleophilic substitution. So therefore, if we are setting up the conditions to favor SN1 reaction, we're going to want to keep the temperature low. And finally, the products that we're going to form in an SN1 reaction are going to be racemate, which contains equal portion of the enantiomers. We'll look at this mechanism to further explain this point. Let's use S2-bromobutane as our substrate. The first step in an SN1 reaction is the departure of the leaving group. In our example, bromine is the leaving group. It's going to leave to form a carbocation and a bromide ion. Now, since the carbocation is triangular, that means when the nucleophile attacks, there are two sides that it can attack from. We're going to use water as our nucleophile in this example. So water is going to attack the carbocation either from the left or from the right. If it attacks from the left like this, it's going to form this intermediate. If it attacks from the right, like this, it's going to form this intermediate. These two intermediates are not the same. They are actually enantiomers. More on that later. Since there's an equal chance for the nucleophile to attack from either side, the product that we get is going to be 50% each. Like I said, the stereochemistry for both the intermediate is different. The one on the left will have inversion to its chiral center, while the one on the right retains its stereochemistry. Each of these intermediate will need to go through one more step to remove that extra proton. We'll use our nucleophile water to remove that extra proton from our intermediate, and we call this step deprotonation. So we do this for one of the product, and the final product that we get is R2-butanol, and then we repeat the same process, deprotonation, for the other intermediate, and then we get S2-butanol. To sum up the SN1 mechanism, we started with an alkyl bromide. Add in water, we get two alcohols that are enantiomers. Our substrate is S2-bromobutane. And then we get S and R2-butanol. Since the stereochemistry for S2-butanol is the same as our substrate, S2-bromobutane, we'll say that there's retention of the chirality. As for the R2-butanol, since it's opposite of our substrate, we'll say that there's an inversion to its chiral center. The ratio of the product is 50-50 or 1 to 1. 
since there's an equal chance for the nucleophile to attack the triangular carbocation. So we call this equal mixture of enantiomer as racemate. The highlight of SN1 reaction is the formation of carbocation at the very beginning that is rate determining and the products that are formed are going to be racemate, which is 50-50. With that, we're done discussing SN1 reaction. There are other videos on SN2, E1 and E2 reactions. Do look for them in the description box below. Here's a video that I handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.